How will I guide my students toward growth? So just a reminder that this piece is occurring within the first uh, six to seven weeks as you're getting to know your students, as you are looking at that measurement that you created to determine where students fall on the initial skills profile. So what you will do here is capture your student data regarding the SLO process. So the student growth tracker form is just a place where the teacher and the administrator can watch the data from time to time. This can help with discussions through the PLC process and with your appraiser because remember this is something that is ongoing. But the student growth tracker form just catches a snapshot of the progress for each student. So this is available in Excel format. It is also available as a hard copy. So that will be just whichever one of those is your preference. So you're gonna start with the individual student name, enter that. Then once you have your data from the initial skills profile, um, remember we talked about the teacher that did the lab, the check-in with a one, two, or three, and whatever measure you're gonna use, you're gonna identify where your students are and complete the initial skills profile. Where you would expect them to be would be listed under the targeted student skill profile growth goal. And then you're gonna check in with them three times throughout the year or the semester to see where they are and how they're making progress. Then at the end of the year, you will complete the last two columns. So here's an example um, of a student growth tracker that is started at the beginning of the year where the teacher listed where the student was when they came in. Uh, let's look at Adam. He was well below typical at the beginning and then the targeted range would be that he would be in the typical, that he would be um, with the majority of the other students at the end of the year where he would need to be. So now we're gonna complete step four, and this is developing a plan about how will you guide your students toward the growth? How will you differentiate instruction for those students? What strategies are you gonna to use to monitor progress? And then what is your plan for conferencing uh, with your team, with your colleagues that are also doing the SLO and your administrator? So please take some time to think about this as you complete step four. Now we're gonna move into phase two, the monitoring progress that drives instruction. So just a couple of reminders here. Um, in phase two, make sure the assessments, and we're not talking CBAs and STAR and those kind of things, but make sure the assessments that you're using to determine if students are typical, well below typical, well above typical, that they match your SLO. We're gonna focus on monitoring students and reflecting on instructional practices and then adjusting to the needs of students. During phase two, this is an important reminder to be aware of what's working and what's not working, then make adjustments as needed and continue to collaborate with your colleagues as well as your appraiser. So as we discussed, phase two will be the majority of the year. And now we're gonna move into phase three. Phase three looks at evaluating success and reflection. So at this point, you're gonna use your data collection measures as evidence of the SLO outcomes for the SLO process. You'll record your scores on that growth tracker that we just talked about, keeping in mind that scores are reported for the targeted skill profile level. Multiple measures are not just okay, but they are strongly encouraged because we want to have an accurate uh, picture of where students are. So you would want to look at multiple ways to assess the student learning on that skill focus statement. So a couple of reminders with phase three. Um, at the end, during the end of your conference, you are gonna submit this to your appraiser as well as sample assessments that you use to determine those end of year skill levels. And then 
Be prepared to talk about those, what you've learned along the way, what's worked for you, what didn't work, um, and just areas that you have grown at that end of year conference. This is the SLO rating rubric. You've probably wondered, okay, we've done the SLO piece. Now, how does this tie to T-test? So this is the rubric that is designed um, to determine where a teacher fell as far as distinguished, accomplished, proficient, developing, or needs improvement using the SLO process. So as you can see, looking at these, um, looking at the proficient area, the teacher crafted a quality SLO. They set student growth goals that reflected high expectations. The teacher monitored student progress, collected data, and was reflective and then made adjustments along the way and that most students demonstrated growth. So that's just a quick example of how all of this feeds into T-Test. So let's just do a quick year at a glance at the beginning of the year. Um, things that you would need to bring and be prepared for for the beginning of the year conference with your appraiser. You would need to have your SLO form completed uh, with your skill statement, initial skill profile, and your targeted skill profile. You would need to have the growth tracker completed up to this point of where you can since it is the beginning of the year. You would want to look at the success criteria of how you're going to know if students have been successful on the SLO skill statement and then the rating rubric, how it ties to T-test just so that that can be reviewed. You would also want to bring the assessments that you're going to be using to determine where students fall within those five descriptors of typical, well below, well above, any student work, and then any instructional planning calendars that will help you to identify when you're going to check in with the students. Middle of the year for the conference, things that you would want to be thinking about is are your students on track to meet their targets for the end of the year? What adjustments have you already made? Which ones still need to be made? And what additional support might you need from your appraiser? In looking at the end of year conference, you would want to have your SLO form again. Now that growth tracker is going to be completed and the rating rubric to discuss how that correlates to T-test. You'll also want to bring your end of year assessments that you've been using to determine where your students are, sample student work, and then just your thoughts and reflections. So here is a quick timeline to help you see the year at a glance. In September, this is the time that you're getting to know your students academically. You're getting to see where they are with the skill statement. You're gonna to continue to work on your SLO draft and bring that to your administrator for your beginning of the year conference. In December or January, that's when you'll have your middle of the year conference with your appraiser and you're going to um, also make sure that you're checking in with students and assessing them then in March or April, you're going to reflect on the SLO, on the progress of each of your students and where they were, and have your end of year T-test conference. Just keeping in mind that it is the expectation that you are meeting with other teachers who are going through the SLO process, that you're discussing this, um, that you're monitoring student progress with your team, with your administrator, just to ensure that all students are meeting their goals. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, we're excited about SLOs and how they can monitor student growth focused on one of those big skill statements and essential standards. If you need any help, please feel free to contact me or your campus administrator, and we will do everything that we can to support you as we go into this next year. We know that it's gonna be great, that wonderful things are already happening on your campus, and we look forward to a successful school year.